This USB audio interface has four inputs, four outputs for 199 US dollars. And this is the Evo 8 by Audient. What is going on, my friend? Chris Elim here from Mixdown Online. Hope you're good, hope you're safe. Now let's talk about this very cool audio interface, the Evo 8 by Audient. I actually reviewed the little brother, the Evo 4, I think it was like a few months ago, back in the spring, I believe. Uh, this one is a two input, two output to audio interface. Uh, very cool, I was actually very impressed with this model. And now we have an even bigger one, better. And this one is the Evo 8, which has, like I said earlier, four inputs, four outputs, very portable, self-powered, meaning that you don't need any power adapter to carry with you. You just plug that into your computer and you're good to go. When we open the box, what we get is the Evo 8 and also a USB-C cable, which is very nice. Um, you can use this type of cable, you know, USB-C cable, and also a USB-C to USB-A cable. Now, the difference is, since this audio interface is self-powered, if you use the interface with a USB-C to USB-A cable, um, you're only gonna have access to phantom power on two channels out of the four preamps, okay? But if you're using uh, the, uh, uh, the USB-C cable that comes with it, you'll be able to use uh, phantom power on all four preamps, which is quite nice. Now let's take a quick look at the features we have with the Evo 8. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it out by recording my live drums using four microphones. Then I'm gonna show you this very cool feature, the smart gain feature that is one of the highlights of this interface. I'm gonna show that to you while recording the drums and also the software that comes with the Evo 8, which is quite cool. Now, if we look at the front of the interface, we have a JFET instrument input and also two headphone outputs. On the back of the Evo 8, we have the four inputs, uh, which are XLR, NTRS combo inputs. And then we have the four outputs, which are simply two stereo outputs to plug in your studio monitors or even two sets of studio monitors if you want, since we have more than one pair of outputs, or you can use a second one if you wanna send a mix to the artist you are working with, very useful. And then we have the USB-C connector. On the top of the interface, we have phantom power right here on the corner top left, and then we have access to control the four uh, inputs, the four preamps. Uh, we have a smart gain, which we are gonna take a look at uh, in a few minutes. And then we have the output controls right here to control your headphones or studio monitors. Then the big knob will control the volume of the headphones, the uh, main outputs, and also the gain of all four preamps. Okay, now let's go and try this one out. Now I have the Evo 8 on my side connected to my laptop and I'm gonna use all four microphone inputs that I have on the Evo 8. So I'm gonna mic these drums with four microphones. I have on the snare the i5 from Audix, on the kick the D6 from Audix also, and the overheads, which are my favorite microphones to mic overheads so far, the Mini K47 from Roswell Pro Audio. Now the mic placement setup that I have is the Glenn Johns technique, which consists on micing the kick, the snare, and also placing a overhead microphone on the top of the snare, and also one on the side of the drum kit, just above the floor tom, aiming straight on the snare to the same distance as the top microphone has to the snare. So this is basically the Glenn Johns technique. What I'm going to do first is to set that up on the Evo 8. All microphones are connected right now. Um, now on the computer I have access to the Evo software uh, which we are going to look at a bit more in depth later on. Uh, but for now what I'm going to do is to open view and open show mic pre-controls. And this is going to open up at the bottom of the window I will have access to the gain controls and also the phantom power that I can activate on every single channel since I'm using a USB-C cable to connect the Evo 8 to the laptop. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is to activate um, uh, phantom power on channel three and four. So I'm gonna do it straight uh, 
uh, from the software by just clicking on 48 volt on the third microphone. If you want to do it straight on the Evo 8, you uh, select the channel that you want to add um, Phantom Power and you click on 48V and there you go. Both of these microphones needed phantom power since they are condenser microphones and I'm talking about the Mini K47s. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to balance the gain using smart gain. Um, now, the smart gain feature on the Evo 8, uh, which is the same as the Evo 4, is a very cool way to balance the gain of your recordings. Everything is done under the hood. Uh, the Evo 8 is going to analyze the signal coming into the preamps and it's going to balance the gain out. So I'm going to activate Smart Gain, select the channels that I want Smart Gain to work on, and when I'm ready to play, I'm going to click on Smart Gain again. So there you go, that simple. Now the important thing when working with Smart Gain is to play with the same intensity and energy as you will when recording. So this way, uh, the Evo 8 is gonna give you way better results. Okay, now I am ready to jump in Cubase and to start my recording session. Okay, so now I have four channels. Uh, one for the kick, one for the snare, overhead top and overhead sides. Uh, the first one, the kick, is routed to mono in one, the snare to mono in two, and so on, until we get to mono in four. I'm just going to double check uh, with the audio connections and make sure that the input buses are well routed to the interface. So the first mono in bus uh, is routed to the microphone input one, and the second one, mono two, is routed to microphone input two. So same for the third mono bus and also the fourth mono bus. So now I am good to go. So I'm gonna activate a record on all of those channels and start recording. So there you go, that simple, it didn't take me a long time to set everything up and start recording in Cubase. Now let's take a look at the Evo software. Now I'm using Windows and I'm going to click right here on that show hidden icons. Right click on the Evo icon and click on show mixer. And there you go. Now I have access to the Evo mixer, which is going to control the Evo 8. And it's also going to work with the Evo 4. So if you have the Evo 4, you can download the latest software and drivers. So right now I have my microphone plugged into channel 1 with Phantom Power active. So I can actually control everything from the software without even touching the Evo 8 itself. Now, what you are hearing right now is coming out of output 1 and 2 of the Evo 8. Now, for channel 1 and 2, and for channel 3 and 4, we can convert those channels into stereo channels. So let's do this with, uh, with input 3 and 4 by clicking on this mono icon, and that will convert those two channels into one stereo channel. This is practical if you want to record like, let's say, an analog synth that is stereo. You can plug that into input 1 and 2 or input 3 and 4 and convert to stereo. So this is going to convert those two mono channels into one stereo channel that you can use in Cubase to record that stereo instrument on one stereo track. So that can be practical. And that can also be done while recording an acoustic instrument using a stereo pair of microphones. You can do the same in this case. Then at the bottom, like we saw earlier, we have the gain and also um, the 48V, which is phantom power. Next to the inputs, we have a PC1, 2, and PC3, 4, which is the playback coming from your computer and a DAW. Then we have loopback. That is a very cool option that I'm not going to cover in this video, but I'm going to make like a specific video talking about loopback later on. Um, but what this is essentially doing um, is you can actually take a, uh, a signal coming out of the Evo 8 and bring it back on its own channel. So you can record that signal into Cubase or like I'm doing right now in OBS. And this is exactly what I'm doing in the OBS. The signal coming out of the Evo 8 is going back 
in OBS uh, as a loopback input. So let's say you uh, you want to record something coming out of the internet, like you know a YouTube video or anything from another website. You want to record the audio in Cubase. You can use loopback as an input, and this is going to do the trick. But again, I'm going to do a specific video on this feature because loopback is a feature found on several audio interfaces. Then we have the master mix knob to level out output one and two for your studio monitors and also output three and four if you want to send a, uh, a custom mix to an artist you work with. More on that in a bit. Now let's talk about monitoring. Um, right now I am monitoring myself straight from the Evo 8, meaning that I'm not going through Cubase. As you can see, I have Cubase at the bottom here. Um, I have my vocal channel that is right here. Um, that is actually routed to input number one out of the Evo 8. Um, now I didn't activate the monitor option that I have straight in Cubase because I wanted to monitor my vocal straight from the Evo 8. I'm doing so because I want to avoid getting latency. Uh, and by monitoring myself through the Evo 8 itself, I'm bypassing Cubase. So this way the signal doesn't have to go through Cubase before getting to my headphones. So instead of going from the microphone to the interface, then Cubase, then back into the interface and my headphones, I'm bypassing the, the AW part or Cubase part. So I'm just going from the, uh, from the microphone through the interface, then my headphones directly. So this way I avoid latency. So let me just give you an example. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to activate the monitor option on, uh, on Cubase. And, and I'm, I'm going to keep, keep, oh, there, there you go. go. Now, now you can, can hear, hear that, that, you know, latency going on because I have my direct signal plus the monitor signal from Cubase. So I have both signals right now. It's actually very uncomfortable now. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to change, change, first of all, let me just bring this one down. Okay, I'm first going to change the buffer size. To do so, I'm going to go right here on top on Setup, click on Set as your buffer size, and right now it's way too high for recording, so I'm going to bring that down to 64. Well, this is what you need to understand here is by clicking on Setup and uh, clicking on Buffer Size, you have access to all those buffer size, which is going to influence the amount of latency that you will get if you monitor yourself through your DAW, like in my case, Cubase. Now, the lower the buffer size, uh, the harder it's going to be for your computer to run. Okay, so it's going to be a bit more harder on your computer CPU, so you need to be careful with that. So if you end up with a lot of glitches and stuff, you're going you're gonna to have to bring up the buffer size, and that will increase, uh, unfortunately, the latency. So this is why it's very nice to have the option to monitor through the Evo 8 itself without going into the, the AW. So that can be practical in some cases, especially when recording drums or vocals. I found it very practical to monitor using the, uh, the hardware itself, like the sound interface, without going into Cubase. This is something that I do all the time. I always use the sound interface uh, um, direct signal instead of using Cubase when I do some recording, um, especially for vocals and drums. So now just to have you listen to the difference, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring back the direct signal and now we are at a buffer size of 64 samples. And there you go. Now you, you can hear a bit of a kind of a uh, phasing effect going on. So this is the amount of difference of latency that we have at the moment. All right, so now I'm back to a direct signal straight from the Evo 8. Now, something that you can also do is to send a monitor mix to the artist you work with so that artist can have its own personal mix. So to do so, what you can do is to click on Setup. Mine was already active, but you need to have the Enable Artist Mix uh, checked on. I'm going to deactivate it so you can see how it looked like before and then uh, just enable it. And there you go. Now, the cool thing is that you can then click on output three and four from the right side of the Evo software. And now everything is going to, like the top line is going to turn out uh, orange or a light tone of orange, which means that you are right now um, working on the monitor mix of your artist, which is output three and four. And from this point, you can bring up and down every single channels if you're recording several instruments at the same time and build the uh, personal mix for your artist. And 
also bring up and down the mix coming from Cubase and that will not affect your own mix because your own mix is output one and two. This is your mix when everything turns out green. It's very cool that you can go from one to the other in a very fast way. You can, you have also access to the main output level of output three and four straight from the software. Now, as far as the preamp goes, they sound very good and clean. Uh, but, and for the price, I'm gonna have to say it's hard to find something negative about the Evo 8, especially at 199 US dollars. I think you get a lot for the investment. Um, so there you go. So this is the Evo 8 by Audient. I like this interface, very practical, very easy to work with and portable also. So if you're looking for something that is not that expensive and you need more than just two inputs, the Evo 8 is actually a very good option. So check it out. I'm going to leave all the links below. I also have a Sweetwater affiliate link that you can use if you want to put your hands on the Evo 8. Everything is down below. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, share and like and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Until next time, take care and see you.